From the very beginning, God has created you and I, all of humanity, with free will. What's the point? What's the purpose of that? The idea is that we cannot truly love unless we're free. Free to be loved, but also to love in return. And that's why it's kind of a, a sticky or dangerous possibility that God gives us free will because that opens a door, of course, for sin and all of its effects and everything else. But without this freedom, we cannot be love and become the love that God desires us to be. This is kind of the point of discipleship. You know, today we oftentimes think of our freedoms and we think about an infringement on our freedoms. And we tend to think of freedom as I'm free from something. I'm free from doing this. I'm free from doing that. I'm free from being abused or slavery or what have you. But really freedom in the Catholic and biblical mindset is that we're free for something. We're free for love. That's kind of the point of this discipleship series. It's actually to kind of reflect on that idea that we're free for something. Pope Benedict XVI actually has a great quote about this. He says that basically the world today offers you comfort, but you weren't made for comfort. You were made for greatness. I think this ties really intricately to this idea of freedom, about what we are free for, what we are made for. Now, discipleship is kind of a funny topic, you know? I think it's a word that's thrown around a lot nowadays. You hear the word discipleship and, you know, discipleship series and, you know, what does it mean to be a disciple, intentional disciples, and all this kind of terminology. And so I wanted to hopefully create this series so that there's just a clarity around what discipleship is and what it isn't and how we can best integrate our understanding of it so as to live and become the disciples God wants us to be. So let me make a couple of distinctions that I think might be helpful. First of all, when you just think of the term disciple in the first place, right? You think about that term, and it's a fairly general term. It can be used to apply to a lot of different people. I think a lot of people tend to think of Jesus specifically, but before that, you can be a disciple of Buddha. You could be a disciple of Muhammad. You could be a disciple of this particular philosopher or something, which is basically just to say that you follow their teachings. You adhere to what they say or what they ascribe. You adhere to that philosophy, that worldview, whatever it might be. So, therefore, you can have disciples of, of anything, of anybody and any of any teaching. But let's take it down another notch, right? You think about a Christian disciple. What does that mean? Well, a Christian disciple tends to typically think of the original 12, of course, the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. But we tend to think of a disciple as, again, a, a learner, somebody who's kind of uh, following the teachings of a certain individual or person. So a Christian disciple would be one who is following the teachings of Christ. Great. Fair enough. Very well, well explained, right? But I want to take it down another notch because I think when you really look at the scriptures and you really see what Christ calls us to, it's not just necessarily to follow teachings, it's to be in a personal relationship with Him. This is what Christ calls us to. And so for our understanding, and for all intents and purposes, our understanding as a, in a Christian and biblical mindset of what it means to be a disciple is to be one who is in relationship with Jesus Christ, one who, who learns and grows from Him. So truly we follow Him, we learn from His teachings, but it's more than just following a set of theoretical principles and a philosophy. It's actually being in relationship with person by, by seeing them, by knowing them, by seeing their gestures and hearing them regularly, listening to them. This is the type of discipleship that Jesus calls upon and calls for. You see this all throughout the scriptures. You see where Jesus are, is intricately tying it to himself. You know, you might see Buddha or somebody else or Muhammad say, hey, follow my teachings or do this and this is my teaching to you. If you do this, your life will be free or better or what have you. But Jesus doesn't say that. He says, follow me. He says, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. He says, become, uh, I'm the vine, I am the vine, you are the branches. You know, he says this intricate depth of connection that's very personal. And this is what he's calling us to as disciples. So an intentional disciple would be one that is purposefully choosing to be in a relationship with Christ and for the sake of others to share him with others. See, the end goal is not just to be a follower of Christ. The end goal is to be in relationship with Jesus and then to also, in turn, introduce others into that same relationship with Jesus. Oftentimes, you know, I think about this, I've had friends, you know, I've met friends and, and made new friends at like a place of work. And I had my other group of friends that I already had from college or my spouse and stuff like that. And I meet this new person. I'm like, man, they're really great. They're cool. You know, and I, I get to know them through work and I get to inter integrate and have them as a friend at work. And they kind of just are, are a friend there, just alone at work. But inevitably, what I want to do is invite them into my other friend group. I want to invite my friends to know this same person because I just think they're that great and I want them to know them as well, and I want that interconnection to happen. So inevitably what will happen is I'll have a party or something like that, and I'll invite this work friend because I want to introduce him or her to my other friends. 
and I want my other friends to meet this other person as well because I think they just add to their own friendship. Do I lose anything in that scenario? Do I lose my prior friendship with this individual or lose anything from my friendships that I already had? No, if anything, it actually enlivens it, it makes it better. And the same is true for us when it comes to the faith. When we share the faith, when we give it away, when we have this relationship with Jesus, and then we introduce others to Jesus as well, it has this weird effect where we don't lose anything of this initial relationship with Christ. In fact, it grows better and stronger and deeper. And the people that you were friends with as well that you introduced Christ to, well, now you have a new point of connection. And that friendship even deepens and grows as well. This is what we want as far as discipleship goes. For, for our full and robust understanding, it's not just about following a teaching, so that's something that's theoretical. It's not just about following even just Jesus' teaching. It's about being in connection and in community, in relationship with Christ. That's a great question for us to reflect on. Is my personal faith, is my relationship, am I discipling Christ in the sense that I'm becoming intentional and being purposefully seeking out a relationship with him and becoming in relationship with him so as to share him with others for the greater good of sharing him with others. There's always that end goal. Whenever we come into relationship with anyone, anyone ever in the scriptures come into relationship with Christ, it's never just for them. Sometimes I think we tend to be in this consumer mindset as Catholics or as even just as Christians in general. We tend to think, oh, I'll go to church or I'll read scripture or I'll pray because I want to have a relationship with God. And that's awesome. That's great. And that's, that's always good. But it's, it's got to move beyond that consumer thing where I just want a relationship with God for myself because anytime we come into a real, authentic relationship with God, he sends us out. Look at Abraham, look at Moses, you look at David, you look at Jesus and what he did with the disciples. That relationship is never just meant to be between you and God. It's meant to be shared and given and expressed. And that's really what discipleship calls for. Now you might ask, what does discipleship cost? And here's where the hard part comes in. It costs everything. All throughout the scripture you can see Jesus talks about picking up your cross and following him. In one particular scripture, we see this story of a rich young man that runs up to Jesus. He's excited. He's like, hey, I want, I want to, you know, how do I get to eternal life? And he wants to go to heaven, which all of us do, of course. And Jesus looks at him and he says he loved him. It's beautiful scripture. He says he looked at him, he loved him. And he says, you know, and, and he hears him. He says, you know, follow the commandments. Do the things, you know, to come into relationship with me. Elsewhere, Jesus also says the same thing to his own disciples, especially near the end at the Last Supper. He's saying this to the disciples. Follow my commandments. Follow my teachings. So the young man says, yeah, I've done all that for my youth. Jesus kind of looks at him again with that love, and he says, you lack just one thing. Go sell what you have and come follow me. It costs him everything. And that story, the rich young man walks away sad. It's actually the only scriptural reference where we have somebody that Jesus concretely invited to discipleship, and the person turns him away and says no. You know, he calls Matthew, he calls, you know, Peter and James and John, he calls all these people and they leave their nets, they drop behind what they're doing and they follow Jesus. But this rich young man, he simply saw the cost as too high. So that's a great example and something for us to reflect on. Do I really actually want to be an intentional, purposeful disciple of Christ? Do I want to be one who's in relationship with Jesus, but not just for the sake of that relationship, but for the sake of also pouring it out, giving it away? And that's what we're going to examine more closely in this series. The image that comes to my mind that I think is most fitting and most helpful for me to kind of wrap my mind around this is the image of a funnel. And you think about a funnel, and this is what we are to become. A funnel has a very direct purpose. The funnel is open wide at one end, so to receive, and then narrow at one end so as to pour out and to give. You think about a, another container like a mason jar or another cup or container or glass. That's only got the purpose of receiving and containing and holding on to a certain liquid or whatever it might be, right? But no, no, not for us. Discipleship, intentional discipleship is about receiving for the sake of giving. And that's what we're going to really talk about. In episodes two and three, we're going to kind of more closely examine that receptive end of the funnel. How are we receiving from God and how are we receiving appropriately? for the sake of giving away. And that'll be episodes three and four. I'm sorry, four and five. We'll kind of more closely examine how we're pouring our life away. We receive so that we can give. And that is the dynamics, the spiritual dynamics of discipleship and of this life in Christ. I hope you enjoy this, uh, oh, this first session right here, but I also hope that you enjoy the rest of the series because I think it'll really just help us to frame and wrap our minds around how we can best be the disciples that Christ calls us to be so that we can help encourage and bring others into that same kind of or dynamic, into that same relationship with Jesus.